Welcome to I Can Do That. I'm David Lyle, your host this time. Today, we are building this cabinet. This is your router bit storage solution. We have half inch bits up here, quarter inch bits down here, uh, and some really fun materials to work with that we haven't done yet on I Can Do That. We're working with some plexiglass acrylic. Um, it's quarter inch thick and we cut it for the door here. And then we use a really interesting mechanism for the hinge. This little aluminum rod is the entire hinge assembly. So we have a special notch up here where this goes in. It goes into this rail that captures the plexiglass. It's cool. Then, last thing, our handles on these trays for your bits is made out of one inch by one inch angle aluminum. And I show you how to cut that, make sure it's nice and safe, and it's just very convenient. So we're gonna jump into this build. The stock that we've chosen is one by six red oak. These are 48 inch pieces that we bought uh, pre-cut from the big box store and one by four by 48 inches. And again, like your dimensional lumber, it says one inch, but these are actually three quarters thick. We've also chosen to use a plexiglass door or acrylic or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a 3 16 thick door or piece of uh, acrylic. Um, and we will need to cut that and we have a few tips for that. And then our back is made out of plywood. So I'm gonna get started uh, making the pieces out of the one by six and the one by four. To do that, I need to make sure that I have enough material. So I'm gonna get one side and then a shorter top and then one side and a shorter bottom out of these one by six pieces. Uh, and this one by four stock will be for the shelves. So these are gonna have rabbits that go three eighths in on the ends uh, for the top and bottom. And so I'll show you all of that at the table saw. Now that we have these cross cut from the miter saw, we have to rip the sides down to five inches. Remember there are six right now. So we're gonna rip these to five and then these shorter pieces for the top and bottom need to come down to four and three quarters wide. So let's get these ripped. Now that we have those ripped to their width, we're gonna bring in the dado stack so we can start cutting our rabbits. I've got my saw unplugged and I'm ready to install the dado stack. I do wanna once again say thank you to Woodcraft for sponsoring this video. We picked up this dado stack uh, at our last visit there. Uh, so thank you to them. And you can find all kinds of table saw accessories and accessories for all of your woodworking needs at Woodcraft. Now, to begin installing this, I am setting a 3 8 uh, stack here, which is the two outside blades and one chipper in the middle. So I'm gonna put this in, and I do wanna say that our rabbit is 3 quarters of an inch wide, but I don't feel confident in this saw being able to do that 3 quarter inch pass all at once. So to make it easier on the saw and myself, I'm doing a 3 8 which hopefully should just be two passes, it'll probably end up being about three. Um, and the advantage of using a dado stack like this over a regular blade is that they have a flat top. And so you are getting a nice clean cut um, at the top of your rabbit or dado instead of the kind of curved sort of cut you get with a reg regular ripping blade or cross cut blade. So I'm gonna finish installing this. I need to tighten this up. And then I've also retrieved from the shelf my dado compatible throat plate here uh, for this Bosch saw. Our goal is to make a three quarter inch deep cut and three eighths up. And so we have a three eighths inch wide, so we'll kind of cut one, two, and then three uh, in all likelihood. All right, now that I have my dado stack in, uh, I just wanna show you how I'm measuring this and how I'm gonna go about this process. The fence is currently set to three quarters of an inch from here to the outside of the dado stack. Let me just double check that again. Yes, I did that well. Okay, and it's also 3 eighths of an inch high. And sometimes you have to, and this is unplugged. My table saw is unplugged. 3 eighths of an inch high. So I'm ready to start making these cuts. 
But I do want to mention sort of the process that I'm going to work here. I am not going to start with my board against the fence. I don't really want to trap wood between the fence and the inside of this blade. So I'm going to start with sort of chipping away at this outside edge and then each pass I'll move closer to the fence. By the time I get there, there will be no wood trapped there and I feel confident that is safe. And then one last thing, it is always good to use the square that you left on the bench to make sure that your miter gauge is indeed square to your fence. It is. So we are just about ready to go. Last thing, I promise it's the last thing. On my board here, I have marked somewhere, ah, that I am going to put the rabbit on this side because I have a slight bow in here. And so I want to put the rabbit here so that when I put my plywood back on, it's gonna pull these ends uh, sort of together. And so we will have things nice and square. So let's get started with this. So we made a couple passes and we had to cut. I said, this is no good. We had some massive blowout on the back side of this dado cut. So to remedy that, I have moved my, my auxiliary fence here uh, just a hair off of this fence. And so having a backing board should prevent some of that splintering and that blowout that we're getting. So now that I've done that and fixed my amateur mistake, I'm going to do it. I'm going to check my depth here now that I've made those passes and it looks like I am dead on. I shouldn't say dead. I am right on three quarters of an inch. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to flip it around and do the other side. And I just wanna show you that there is zero blowout since I added that, or made this fence closer to this fence. With that support of this fence, it's beautiful. We're in good shape. With these rabbits complete, we're going to make the rabbit along the long back edge of the cabinet where our plywood is gonna sit in. Remember, we have quarter inch plywood, and so I'm gonna leave this blade at 3 8 high, and I've adjusted the fence over for our five inch piece so from the fence to the inside of the blade is four and three quarters for our five inch board. And we'll make the same adjustment for our thinner board. In this instance, I felt more comfortable keeping my hand on the piece. If it were any thinner, and I won't even do it with this next one, I would not use my hand. And so, because you really, with this dado stack cutting, it, it applies a lot of upward pressure. So I like to keep a lot of pressure on the piece. So there's our next rabbit uh, that's ready to accept our quarter inch plywood. And so I'll do the same with the next one. And then we'll be ready to move on. We're back from lunch and we're ready to start making the notches that are gonna go in our top and bottom piece that will give us room for our hinge mechanism, which we are custom making. You'll be impressed with that later. So we have all of the rabbits in these long pieces, which, which are the size of the cabinet. Our top of the cabinet gets this notch. And what we want is for it to be the depth that will give us the three eighths here and then for the length of this notch, we want to make sure that uh, we have everything we need up here, which is three quarters of an inch. And if you look at it this way, um, we have overhang down here. When you look at it this way, we have room for our quarter inch back 
And that back is going to come up all the way up to the top and the bottom of our top and bottom pieces um, because it's a shop cabinet and we're not too worried about it being fully rabbited in there. So um, if you were to look underneath this cabinet or on top of it, you'd see an edge of plywood. In our last episode of I Can Do That, we showed you how to make a lap joint for our kitchen island. And we did that by drawing with our combination square down the fence right to, oh, right to where this tooth intersects the table. And so that's where we got this line, which is still on here, which I just made a little bit thicker. Now, we are not going to be able to use that exactly the same way in this, um, in this cutout because we don't want to capture this piece between the blade and the table and it's just, it won't work that nice. So we're going to hold the board up here and I want to line up from the top this line and the end of this notch. And now what we can see, if we rotate the blade, and yes, this saw is unplugged, where this little piece of carbide, where this tooth meets the board, we can go ahead and put a notch. A line, not a notch. So that line will tell us as we are making this cut with the miter gauge, Come in. As we are running this board through here, running it, running it, running it on that line, when we get to that part, the bottom side of that notch will be exactly where we need it to be and it will have not gone beyond our intended notch. Okay, so let's cut this. So now that I have this lined up, I just want to remind you when you're making this kind of cut with a miter gauge and it's a stopped cut like this, you want to hold the piece until the saw completely spins down and then you're able to back it out. Okay, and so what we have is I stopped right at this line, pretty, pretty, pretty close. And from the other side, you can see the arc of the blade went further, but when we cut that, we'll see that it stopped right where we needed it. So now I'm gonna cut the other one. Okay, we've moved the table side out of the way a little bit. We need to finish cutting this because remember, on this side, we went to the appropriate depth and we have the notch that we need. On this side, we didn't make it quite as far because of the arc of the blade. So let's lock this in the vise and I'm just going to use a pull saw for this. Uh, we have a cross cut side and a ripping side. Right now we are cutting against the grain, which is going this way. So we're gonna use these cross cut teeth. And you're really trying to watch that you keep the blade against this inside face. Um, and this is a very flexible blade, so you really kind of have to watch it. And as you pull, you work your way down the line. You can check both sides to make sure you're not going too far in either. Chances are you're not going to be pulling exactly level, so you need to watch both sides. And it looks like I'm there. And so now we are ripping. And I need to come with my combination square and carry this line across the top so I stay on track. And this is where we would use the ripping side. And 
And there we go. You can see I followed it all the way down and then to this line up and we are left with our three quarter inch notch. All right, so I'll cut this next one and we'll be able to clean that up with a little chisel just to get this inside corner just right. We're gonna jump into one of the more interesting parts of this build. What I'm holding is what we've coined the hinge rail. This hinge rail will sit on the edge of this piece of plexiglass and we're gonna cut a groove in here that is the exact width of that plexiglass. And let me just show you here. We've already experimented a little and gotten our fit pretty good. We're gonna use a little bit of clear silicone uh, to get the final uh, adhesion here. So that will not only hold it in, but it'll make up for the very slight bit of room we have in there. So right now we need to make this groove. I'm gonna set that over there for now. My blade is a quarter inch above the table and I'm going to be using uh, this micro jig gripper uh, to run this over. So I already have my fence set to where it'll cut this inside cut and then I'll bump it over and we'll make the outside cut. It's really important with small pieces like this that you figure out how you're gonna hold it. And so we could have added a feather board um, we definitely don't want to just use a single grip over it because it's so small. And so this is where things like having a gripper around will really be helpful. So it's against the fence. I'm pushing down on it and this is kind of a support for the gripper and I should be able to just move it over like that. can see that our fit is quite good. And one of the things that's happening here is that there's a slight bow, not only in the plexiglass, but also in this piece a little bit, because they're both thin. And so they're compounding upon one another to make a nice tight fit across the whole thing. So that looks good to me. All right, so now we're ready to start thinking about how we're gonna turn that into a hinge. We have the cabinet in temporary clamps. It's not glued up or anything. I just wanted to show you how our groove down these sides is looking. Uh, we're nice and flush, ready for the plywood back. And if I tip it up, I can show you, and I hope you're still paying attention, YouTube. You're not wandering off now, opening new tabs of videos. This is our hinge rail that's going to sit in this notch over here. And I've never seen this done before. It might be an invention, it might not be. But basically, uh, this is the groove that we made for the plexiglass, so that's gonna be sitting in here. And we are going to use these aluminum dowels to come through the top and the bottom into this rail, like so. And that is going to be the hinge. To do that, I need to make sure that this hole up here and this hole down here are in line. And so I've marked them top, oh, I marked the backs, the top and the bottom pieces uh, so that I can put them back in the top and bottom place. Uh, and I'm gonna drill them at the same time. These are gonna be through holes. So I'll end up cutting this little aluminum dowel um, so that once I'm ready to install them, I can come in through the top and almost into this piece, add a little CA glue to this and then push it the rest of the way in. Follow? Good? Okay. So I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to clamp these together and drill this hole. I found that this dowel requires an eighth inch bit. You should definitely experiment in real wood before assuming anything. So I have marked this hole a quarter inch in from this side and this side. And now I am just gonna go for it, I guess. <laughs> All right, and so I know that I at least got deep enough to get into this piece. 
I don't want to go back in because I'm afraid I'll waller that, that hole out. All right, so now I'm gonna finish the hole here. There we go. Okay, so now we are ready to move on. Okay, so we are going to get this glued up now. I'm gonna apply my glue in these rabbits and then I'm gonna throw some clamps on it. I've pre-drilled for some finish nails and we are going to hold off from putting the back in here because this board has a slight bow in it and I want this glue to set up before we put the back in it so that we can actually use this cabinet to use that plywood to pull the bow out of that side. Uh, and then we're gonna work on that hinge. Let's do this. I would also like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Tight Bond, who makes I Can Do That possible and free for everybody. With their sponsorship and Woodcrafts, we are able to provide you with plans for free. So if you desire to make this cabinet, you are able to download the SketchUp file and a PDF that has your cut list and some dimensioned drawings if you don't have SketchUp or don't like using SketchUp. Though I would encourage you to learn SketchUp because it is a free program and you can do anything with it. With the cabinet glued and nailed, we can get to work on making our door. So this is our hinge rail, so we've coined the term. And now we need to make this hole in here. To do that, I'm gonna come over here, and I've already marked this a quarter inch in from this face and a quarter inch in from this face, which you'll notice is not actually centered on the piece. And that's intentional because that's how we made the marks over there. And so we are gonna put this in the vise and use an awl, awl, to give us a nice start point here because a small bit, spit, small bit like this will tend to wander if you don't give it somewhere to go. We've flagged it so that it's the same depth as this one, which is not imperative, but we just wanted a reference point so that we can get the right depth on here. And we just make sure we're nice and level. Okay, and the same on the other side. With the cabinet on its back, we can put the hinge rail in here and it matters which side is front because we offset from this reference face, which is the front of the cabinet. And now we get to put our aluminum bar in. And so with that set depth, we can use both rods to go ahead and get in there. Um, and so now I'm gonna use both bars so that I can back this out a little bit, put some CA glue on here, put it back in, and it'll be locked in forever. As I'm gluing that in, I'm gonna be watching the gaps at the top and the bottom to make sure that they're even. All right. So I'm gonna mark while it's all the way in on the bar so I know how far I'm taking it out. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply. side. You don't have a ton of time with CA glue. So I'm going to mark that. And drive that in. I'm going to come out a little more and get on there. And then I just want to make sure that this is Nice and centered. I'm happy with those gaps. 
we will let that dry onto my finger and come back to it. I've gone ahead and cut off one of the pins already and I wanted to show you the process. I'm using a coping saw, just a regular, regular old saw. Um, use a blade that has been around for a while uh, because it might not cut as well in wood after you do this. But really, you just go to town. Um, that's an aluminum pin. And then use a metal file to flush that up. And I can dial that in later. But you're gonna end up with a nice shiny pin up top. Um, and then we can test our hinge. And it works! <laughs> I'm really glad that worked. And um, we've spaced it so that this hinge rail, as we've been calling it, um, actually doesn't even need chamfered on this back corner. Um, we sort of weren't sure if that was gonna work, but it did. So you know what? I'm thinking this is a pretty cool, inexpensive way to do a hinge. Um, so uh, let me show you what I did while I was waiting for that CA glue to dry. I went ahead and cut all of my shelves to length. And I also drilled with a Forstner bit um, all of the holes. And so router bits pretty much come in half inch and quarter inch shanks. And so I chose to alternate my pattern instead of putting them uh, in front and back of each other because we found we have another uh, cabinet in here that when they're behind each other, you kind of can't see what's there. And so with this design, we are able to stagger them and get plenty in there. So um, I did, this shelf has quarter and half inch, all quarter inch, all half inch, all quarter inch. You can mix it up however you want. If your collection of bits grows, you can just make a new shelf, not a big deal. And then finally, I wanna show you my shelf brackets. We are using uh, these little brackets from the big box store. Um, they're three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch with holes already in them. And in here, uh, this way. <laughs> and this is when you have to make your decision. Is your door gonna open um, from the right or from the left? And depending on what you want, you can flip it around. Um, I decided to have my handle on the right side because I wanted it there. The bottom bracket is gonna sit pretty much just right on the bottom here, um, elevating that bottom shelf off just a little bit. And then you need to figure out your spacing to get them even or however you want them. If you have a lot of really tall bits, like this big flush bit, um, you might wanna make different decisions. And so uh, we made this top shelf a little bit smaller uh, just because we figured we put some of our quarter inch bits that we use less up there. Um, with these brackets, I marked off, and this is the back over here, where you can see our rabbit, um, off three quarters of an inch, just to offset this bracket uh, towards the back a little bit so that our shelves will have the bracket centered under them because they don't come all the way to the front of the case. So with that, I um, am going to install my shelf brackets, and then we are gonna get ready to cut the plywood back and the plexiglass window. The plexiglass that we bought is two feet long and, what is it? 18 inches wide. We have to measure from the inside of our channel to this edge. And so our plexiglass is gonna sit in here and then come to the edge of this side. So if I use this steel rule, I can just stick it right in this channel. And we see 14 and three quarter. One thing to note is that you need to measure in a couple places because our hinge rail is slightly bowed. We're off about a sixteenth, and so I think we're going to cut ours right at 14 and 5 eighths just to give ourselves room for the silicone to sit, and that'll be good. So we're going to come over to the table saw, and I want to just talk about one thing before we get any further. When you're cutting plexiglass on a table saw, you wanna bump up to a finer tooth blade. Just to remind you, uh, we already cut the plywood black back uh, with this 40 tooth blade, and now we have a 90 tooth blade. 
on our plexiglass. It will also come with a plastic uh, sheet over it that is super fun to peel off, but don't peel it yet because you wanna keep it on for this process as you push it through. Um, it should cut pretty nicely. Um, it's a nice material to work with. So uh, I'm gonna put this guard on and then we will get into this cut at 14 and 5 eighths. Okay, so that gave us our rip cut to the right depth. And now we need to cut it to length. We need to cross cut this thing. So what I see on our hinge rail is 22 and 3 eighths. I will go very, very, very shy of that um, because I don't want to do it twice. Now that we have our plexi cut to size, I'm, I've peeled back the plastic just enough so it fits in the groove of our hinge rail. And we can see that this is good on length. And it looks like we're kind of rocking in the middle a little bit. One of the things we can do, and we're really close, is throw a clamp here to here and here to here to press that in. So I'm gonna do that, and when I do that, in a moment, I'm going to throw a little bit of silicone in here just to make sure that that doesn't fall out. I don't think it will, it's press fit pretty good, but this will make sure that it locks it in there for ever. And then, uh, I think while I'm at it, I'm going to throw in my plywood back that we've cut. So one thing to think about when you're doing this, and my cabinet's upside down, when your cabinet is right side up, uh, we're using oak plywood, uh, we used an oak frame too, um, but with oak you get these big uh, shapes which are called cathedrals. And so, sort of tradition, and I think what is aesthetically the best, is to have those pointed up. So I will mount this back in here like this, and I'll just throw a couple nails in there to hold that on with a little bit of glue. Um, and then we will be ready to move over to the chop saw. We have some aluminum stock here. This is one inch by one inch. And this is gonna be cut into four inch sections that will serve as a bit of a grip for these shelves. So it'll sit, we'll screw into the bottom and that gives us a nice little grip up here and it also adds some sweet flair. So I'm gonna get all this done and then I'll uh, check back in with you in a minute. We're ready to cut our one by one aluminum angle. I almost said angle iron, it's not iron. Our angle aluminum. Um, and we are cutting this into four inch sections and we're doing this on the chop saw. I've already done a few. It goes really well because the carbide teeth on this are significantly harder than aluminum. Um, and so it, at 1 16th thick, it, it cuts like butter. So uh, don't be scared. Just uh, go ahead and cut it exactly as you would wood. Um, perhaps chopping slower, but yeah, watch. So there's really not much to it. So let's uh, look at the secondary processes on this material. I've gone ahead and I've already done one of these so you can understand where we're headed. We have our bits up top and this is screwed in two places on the bottom. I suppose that would have looked better if I had like measured them, but anyway, uh, it leaves a nice lip up here so that when you pull the shelf out, you have a positive grip there. Um, so some of us may have not drilled into metal before. Um, there's not a lot to it, but what I would do first is sort of break all the edges with a metal file, just so there's nothing sharp from where you cut or from the factory, because they're, they'll get you if you don't get them out of the way. So just a couple swipes with a metal file. Don't use your wood file on this. 
and we're pretty much good to go. So um, I'm using just a 1 8 bit, and I'm using some leftover screws from the uh, brackets, the shelf brackets. So basically, we're just drilling a through hole. And I'm going to try and uh, kind of just aim this over this hole so I don't drill into my bench again, because that wasn't nice of me to do earlier. Uh, and you want to use a higher speed when you're drilling into metal. If this were iron and a little bit thicker, I would say maybe you need a dab of oil on the bit just to uh, make sure that things go smoothly. This is not, there's not much to it. One of the things as you drill through metal that will kind of let you know you're almost done is it starts to give a little bit and then you pop through. Now, using a chamfer bit, and this is just your regular woodworking chamfer bit. I'm going to slow that down a little bit. Um, go ahead and just chamfer that hole. And that'll leave it, that'll take the burr off, uh, but also give your screw somewhere to sit. So now this screw will almost be flush there. If you chamfered it more, it would be just about flush. So, all right, I'm going to do the other side real quick because there's a burr on there. And now we can go ahead and attach this. Careful not to strip them with your power drill. Okay, and there we have our handle. So now that's gonna sit on the shelf. We have a nice grip to pull that out with and control all of those very sharp bits. So I'm gonna put the handles on the last two pieces and then we're gonna take a look at our finished cabinet. Okay, we are all together. We got our door in, we put some bits in. Friends, I think this is looking pretty sharp. I'm excited about this build. So the door is hanging. Um, in this real-time build, we did not have quite enough time to let the silicone fully cure. Um, but I would like, I would remind you to keep clamps on it as long as you can. Um, and our back, remember, is a quarter inch plywood. So I think for our shop, we're gonna just, we have plywood walls because we did that on purpose. And so we're just gonna send some screws to the back panel. You could add a French cleat. You could add some hangers. Um, that's kind of up to you on this build. So um, I just want to thank you for joining us in this episode of I Can Do That. I want to thank our sponsors Woodcraft and Tightbond once again for your support. And we will see you in the next build.